Hi folks, welcome back to the first video of 2020. Today I want to take a look at a paper that's one of my favorites and the reason is that it goes to the heart of what I think computer science is about and that is the trade-off between abstractions, the right abstractions to choose and paying the cost for those abstractions. This paper proposes a new operating system architecture which the authors called an exokernel. This was published back in 1995 by Dawson Engler and his group at MIT. This paper tries to argue that the current traditional way in which operating system abstractions are organized is not the best way to go about it. It is inflexible and applications pay a huge performance penalty in using these abstractions. Most current operating systems like Unix and its variants, they try to provide very high level general purpose abstractions. They try to provide abstractions that meet as many use cases as possible. And in doing so, they make these abstractions very heavyweight and they come with a big performance penalty. The problem with this is that if you have a very specific high performance application in mind that does not need the full power and generality of these abstractions, it still has to pay the performance cost of using it. The way a particular abstraction is implemented always makes a trade-off in favor of one kind of application over another. For example, just look at the caching of disk blocks by file systems. If your application has a very specific read or write patterns that doesn't happen to match the caching algorithm used by the file system, you will pay a performance penalty. And in fact, this is why we see database systems that need really high performance I.O. to the disk subsystem often completely forego the file system altogether. They simply get a bunch of blocks from the raw disk and manage it themselves. Another common example these days is the prevalence of frameworks like DPDK and SPDK in Linux that let applications bypass all the kernel abstractions for storage and networking and go directly to the raw hardware. The architecture being proposed here is ultimately based on the end-to-end -end principle for designing abstractions. I've covered the end-to-end -end paper in another video, so go check that out. But the basic idea of the end-to-end -end principle is that higher level, more intelligent abstractions should live close to the application, which can actually use all that knowledge rather than at lower layers in the stack. What the authors are then proposing over here is to do away with pretty much all operating system abstractions and use what they call an exokernel. An exokernel is a very thin abstraction layer over raw hardware that exposes slices of the underlying hardware securely to higher level applications. And all other higher level functionality goes into the application layer itself. So even things that you would traditionally think of as being in the domain of the kernel, things like file systems or virtual memory or inter-process communication would go into the application layer. And these applications are called library operating systems because at that point, the operating system functionality essentially becomes a library that links into your application. The job of the exokernel now simply becomes to securely expose bindings to the underlying hardware to these applications. The design principle here is separating 
protection from management. An exokernel's job is simply to protect the underlying hardware and not let applications clobber each other's hardware. The actual management of the underlying hardware slices, like managing memory pages or managing disk blocks and so on, actually happens in the application itself. The main mechanism via which these secure bindings are created depends on the specific kind of hardware being exported. For example, when dividing physical memory out to various applications, the exokernel would check whether you have ownership of a page before letting you access it. And this can be made pretty efficient by leaning on hardware mechanisms like TLBs and caching these mappings. Multiplexing the network is a little bit more challenging because back in 1995 when this paper was written, network interface cards did not have very sophisticated isolation and partitioning mechanisms, so they depended on packet filter code to isolate network streams. But I've covered another operating system called Lego OS, which uses similar ideas on modern hardware. And there we saw that modern network cards already allow you to have application specific receive and transmit queues so that every application essentially has its own isolated and protected view of the network card. So those were the underlying principles. They also implemented these ideas in two systems. They have Aegis and Exokernel and Exos, which is a library operating system that uses this exokernel. As we explained, the exokernel exports the raw hardware resources out to the library operating system. The library operating system implements all the higher level functionality like processes and virtual memory and inter-process communication. Here they compare their exokernel and library operating system to Altrix, which is a traditional Unix variant. They test this with a very simple system call like get PID, and we can see that an exokernel system call is about an order of magnitude faster than a traditional monolithic kernel like Altrix. If we look at the performance of higher level mechanisms like inter-process communication using pipes or shared memory, again we see that the exokernel is about an order of magnitude faster than Unix. And this is not a very surprising result given the architecture of an exokernel. The kernel itself is only keeping track of ownership and protecting these resources. It is not managing them. And that makes the kernel very light and fast. So that was a quick look at the exokernel architecture that argues that applications should not have to pay the performance cost of operating system abstractions that they do not use the full power and generality of. Instead, the kernel itself should be a very light layer that simply protects and exports slices of the underlying raw hardware, and the policies via which hardware is managed should be handled at the application layer. If you like these paper summaries, please leave a like, feel free to subscribe. I cover new papers every week. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.